Well, good morning, Navajo Environmental Agency members. Uh, given the proposed revitalization of the nuclear power industry and the hints that uranium mining might be revitalized in, in the region, there's a growing level of concern amongst the agency members regarding what this means for us, especially given the controversial historical precedents that happened in this area in the 1960s. I'm here today to explain, amongst the various measures that we are implementing, why local knowledge should be given serious consideration and why the and, and why we should actually be involving the local members of the community in the process of uh, developments of uranium mining. Well, firstly, the involvement of local knowledge improves and enriches the scientific process. Problem framing is an inherently subjective process, and it's not something that science can solve on its own. When we look at you know, what exactly are the problems, who are the people ex who are exactly going to be affected, and what do they think about it, these are questions that don't lie uh, in science, but rather in the people. And that's why we must move away from thinking about a positivist view of science, that science holds all the answers and involves the people and what they think about it. And secondly, we understand from many stories in history that science is inherently uncertain. There are uncertainties involved in quantifying the effects of various uh, measures. There are uncertainties involved in determining what impacts that uh, particular activity, in this case uranium mining, will have on the future generations. And therefore, local knowledge brings in an important element that science has, does not, is not able to. And this is ultimately patterns and trends in time and space that people living in the area have been observing over decades and over a large area. Ultimately, if we bring in scientists to examine the environmental impact of uranium mining, what will be captured often tends to be a screenshot or you know, a shot in time of what, what actually is going to happen, whereas these people have had their benefits of decades of experience and they will be able to tell us what is most likely to happen over time and space. And lastly, democratization. The, the uranium mining activities that are being taken do not involve only the scientists or only the industry members, but also the people, and it's important to ensure that their views are being heard and are being taken into account in the scientific process. Of course, there will be opposition to such views. Firstly, pe people might say that, you know, in the past, the reason for these problems were that proper rules and regulations were ignored, and the adverse impacts were actually minimal. I would argue that the reason why proper rules and regulations were ignored is the fact that these people were not actually involved in the development of these rules and regulations. And also, there is a false dichotomy between scientific knowledge and local knowledge that actually help that uh, where people think that you know scientists are the only ones that are qualified to come up with uh, good science, whereas people uh, who have not been trained in this area will not be able to do so. Studies have shown in history that a lot of this of this view actually stems from the fact that people aren't used to the language and the technical terms used in science. But when that barrier is crossed, that people you know given their critical thinking skills and their reasoning skills are equally able as trained scientists to be able to contribute to the discussion. So ultimately, how should we ensure that local knowledge is taken seriously? How should we incorporate this? This involves a mindset shift. Local knowledge does not seek to supplant scientific knowledge, and, but rather strengthen it. We need to move away from this false dichotomy and allow locals and scientists to sit at the table as equals, not because they are equally good at something, but because they bring different things to the table that are of equal value. We also would like to recommend that boundary workers be searched for and hired to actually take part in this process. Boundary workers meaning people that are not only able to communicate with those on the scientific side of the boundary, but also with the local side of the boundary. These might be people, uh, local locals who have been trained in science and who are not only understand the, the, the scientific culture, but also the local culture. At the same time, people, just because something is local knowledge does not mean that it is right. So in that sense, high standards have to be expected of the presentation and gathering of local knowledge, not in terms of the use of very formal or technical language, but in terms of critical thinking and reasoning. And only when these scientific standard, these high standards are imposed on our local knowledge will they be taken seriously by the scientists. And ultimately, this entire process is as much a cultural process as it is a scientific process. 
it's not just about the scientific methods that we use, but also in terms of leveraging the cultural and social elements inherent in the community. For example, we might look at the social hierarchy in different regions, and this varies actually from community to community and from town to town. Is there a central figure of trust that we can bring into the discussion to help to forge uh, unity between both the locals and the scientists? And are there certain social um, practices that might need to be avoided or adhered to in terms of working or getting locals and scientists to work together? So ultimately, our agency's role is to avoid the events that happened in the 1960s. And I believe that one way of doing that is to actually bring in local knowledge, not as a form of opposition to what the scientists have been doing, but as an enhancement to their work, to enrich it and to ensure that whatever solution is worked out is in the best interest of both the community and the industry. Thank you.